Hey all, here OS Reviews. A few weeks back we checked out the MK61, which I thought was one of the coolest compact wireless mechanical keyboards, especially for under a hundred bucks. Coral C edition that we picked up. Today we're taking a look at one of its siblings, this one called the WK61, is a more cost-effective variant that sells for around forty dollars. Part of the reason why this one is an additional 30 to 40 bucks less expensive is because it's not a wireless model, so you need to connect it using a USB cable. However, I also really like the design. Although it doesn't have as much of that decal wrapping around it, it goes for this translucent aesthetic instead. So it allows the LED lights to shine through a little bit more easily. The Glacier Blue version here just looks like an ice cube and otherwise still has RGB effects that you can change. All the switches can even be removed to be further custom. This version here is the Red Switch Edition, as well as it's another 60% size keyboard, so it remains very compact. There's a transparent layer beneath the top, which is more of that matte surface, so everything just makes it glow a little bit more gently. So despite the lower price here, it still retains a pretty unique aesthetic, I have to say. So inside here we have just a quick user guide. It's using USB Type-C for data transmission, WK61 itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. We've got a keycap remover and a switch remover tool that you can use to pop it out to change it to other styles, further customize it, and we have a detachable Type-C cable to USB. So this is great to see, it means if the cable breaks or fries, it's going to be really easy to replace. You'll even find some spare keycaps which are in a darker accent but still retains that pudding overall design, which as you can see here basically means it's more translucent on the base and then has that darker color at the top. Once again, they have used pretty customized symbols. So here's the keyboard itself. As aforementioned, it still is very compact thanks to the overall 60% size. You don't get a numpad, but it does have full-size keys in terms of the letters uh, for easily typing things away. And then here it is next to something like a six inch phone. So you get an idea there. And also just a quick comparison with the MK61. It's not surprising that they are essentially identical, although the MK61 I would say is a hair heavier and thicker because it has to accommodate a built-in battery. The entire frame is also made out of this polycarbonate plastic, which is semi-translucent. The back here houses just the Type-C port for data and then just some basic specs on the rear, along with some soft-touch rubber feet. There's no additional prongs that you can flick up to further elevate the height, so it's stuck at this position, but it already has kind of an ergonomic tilt going on. It is pretty lightweight, again doesn't have really any any metal accents, but it's part of the entire consistent design they're going for. And now underneath, we can also see this is what the red switches are like, pretty standard stuff. And as aforementioned, the switches themselves can also be further popped out if you want to even change these to, let's say, blue switches or anything else that you want to further decorate and have just the board itself. But like I said, with the red switches by default, it is a fairly quiet style of mechanical switches. So it's not going to be quite as loud and distracting to those around you. All right, so plugging it into power, immediately we have the RGB lights pop onto life. And the slight flickering you see here on camera is just due to the refresh rate of the camera. It's not actually visible in person. It's a very gentle and stable glow that I am seeing in front of me. Anyways, you can see that the lights here do cast a very mesmerizing glow, and because of the aforementioned pudding keycaps, everything is completely visible in terms of the backlight. The keycaps themselves definitely shine through. It creates this very dazzling appearance that is not only practical when it comes to easier to type in the dark, but also very beautiful to see. The entire frame, like I said, because of this translucent nature, also allows the light to continue to pass through makes the RGB lights more apparent than on many other standard mechanical keyboards. So overall, it does have a very convincing effect as far as imitating ice uh, or a dessert pudding, something like that, which is slightly opaque. And the same thing can be said even from the very top there. The lights can even shine through and continues to make it a dazzling experience. So let's go through some of the preset lighting modes. So you can tap on function and then also the kind of bracket keys here to essentially turn the brightness up and down. Right now this is the maximum setting, which I think is pretty visible. Even if you have a bit of uh, natural sunlight hitting on it, you can see that for the most part, it's still easy enough to see. So we can also change and turn down the brightness until it's completely off if we choose. Now as far as the lighting modes are concerned, we can tap on function and then there is kind of this uh, one icon here next to the slash. This is the key that you can cycle through the 19 different modes. So right now we're in this rainbow rippling pattern. Once more, it will actually change it into completely off. Once more here kind of reverses the direction of the movement. Uh, all looks quite good. Another one here is more of a kind of more abrupt transition between the colors. 
and once more here we'll actually shift the color back and forth which by the way we can also change the actual shade by tapping on function and then the second icon here the left arrow and that will actually change it to a different color as you can see there so right now it's trying to ripple in a rainbow of color and I can also change this to single shades such as red greens and going back to the blue that we started from so it gives you quite a lot of customization to play around with and we can continue to cycle through those tap on this again to go into the next lighting mode this is really the ripple pattern where it's decimating from the center point here and then spreading outwards like a circle of light once more here is kind of a vertical scrolling motion tap on it again it will go into more of this diagonal shade as it is going through the different colors and then once more here it goes into this more gentle circular motion as it's spinning i think this is one of my favorites so far the next time that you wake it up again it will continue where it left off starting to kind of loop around but a few more fun animations like this one that goes in this diagonal here's a snake or a sine wave which once again we're able to change the color very easily just by tapping along there including even a rgb version of all of the colors it allows us to speed up or reduce the animations uh, accordingly so i can slow it down all the way and now it becomes a very slow frame rate but a bit more easy to spot and then again once again we're able to cycle into the other transition effects. This one here is kind of this glowing pattern starting off in the circle. It's not quite as practical in terms of lighting everything up, but uh, still is a nice conversation starter. And let's try speeding that up a little bit more there. So the motion will start to increase. And let's tap on it again. This will now move into a single color that will start to stripe across, rippling through and cycling once again. This is kind of a candy colored mode, which will be randomly changing the individual colors. And then over here we have a reactive memory mode so you can tap along type out something and it will glow for a few seconds before disappearing otherwise there's a single colored mode which is just one uniform color if you want to go with this route and this can also be found it's not going to be really moving but you can also find a very nice natural white light which does look admittedly quite cool with this entire translucent design reminds me even more of ice and i can also go into another rainbow colored Cycling back once again, it will just have uh, some single dots start to spread across, a bit more randomly filling up with light. Again, very nice in terms of all the transition effects you can play with, just make it look very dazzling, and a bit more customization, I would say, than the average budget mechanical keyboard we've seen, especially that all of the different uh, modes, as well as the speeds, can all be customized to your liking. And let's do a very quick typing test of what the switches here sound like. So as you can hear, overall, it's pretty quiet and doesn't become too loud or distracting, but like most mechanical keyboards, it still is a very satisfying typing experience. You don't have to press down quite as hard as on a membrane or chiclet keyboard. The switches are helping you do that work, and overall, it can give you a more fast typing experience as you start to get used to it. The spacebar does have a slightly more louder thunk than on the other keys which are a little bit more crisp, but overall it still feels consistent regardless of where I am pressing down on it. So it's pretty well stabilized and as a whole, no real complaints when it comes to the fluidity. Even works with PlayStations and Xbox consoles, but you have to plug it into the USB port. And if your phone, like on Android, has OTG support, technically you can plug in an adapter and then use USB Type-C to full size Type-A, it will still function that way as well. All right, so that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the new WK61 compact 60% mechanical keyboard. Uh, so if you are a fan of the aesthetic, overall I do think this is an excellent compact budget mechanical keyboard, and you can check out more details in the links below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.